Hello and welcome to another video. Now today I'm out on my SV650 from Suzuki. Yes, this is my very own bike because I want to answer a question and that is, is the Suzuki SV650 still a good bike in 2023? Because you have all new bikes, you've got the Suzuki GSX-8S, you've got the Hornet. How does this bike kind of stack up? It's not going to be a direct comparison, but we can talk about how this bike still fares in 2023. So let's go. Start her up. And listen to that beautiful V-twin sound. On to the point of the video and that is, is this bike still good in 2023? Because as I said, there are a lot of new motorcycles available to purchase in this middleweight naked category, which is a really fierce category, including Suzuki's own GSX-8S, which many touted as the replacement for the SV650, but in fact, Suzuki are still manufacturing the SV650. You can buy a brand new 2023 SV650 and uh, it's got some really lovely colours, lovely black and gold, which I like. Uh, you've got the Honda Hornet, you've got the MT-07 and the Trident. Those are kind of what I would consider as the biggest competition for this bike. Is it still worthy of your consideration? Um, I think yes, and I'll tell you the reasons why. So it's got a V-twin, powerful, characterful, I should say, V-twin engine. 645cc, 74 horsepower, 63, 64 newton meters of torque. But where the engine shines is the linear nature of the torque delivery. And, you know, it isn't the most powerful engine, of course, but it's just full of character. And I know that's a bit of a cliche thing to say, and it's hard to quantify. <laughs> but it just makes you smile when you open the, the throttle. And in an age where everybody is moving over to the parallel twin engine configuration and having those as a stressed member to lose a bit of weight, it is really refreshing that we've still got a V-twin in the lineup. Characterful engine, plenty of torque, enough power really for the road. Those are all solid reasons why you should still consider an SV650. So let's talk about suspension and handling. Now this is a budget motorcycle, so it does have budget suspension and brakes. However, the uh, bike continues to surprise me that when you do go and ride it and even ride it in a spirited manner, it actually handles quite well. Again, it's, it's a budget motorcycle. You do have to take that into consideration and do remember that. It's not gonna handle like a street triple, it just isn't. <laughs> but it is still fun. <laughs> yeah, it's got a really nice, very predictable kind of handling characteristics, which I like. And if you're a new rider, that's quite a comforting thing to have. It's not going to do anything unusual or scare you or, you know, coupled with the linear torque delivery of that engine. It's very predictable, but still rather fun. The brakes have been upgraded more recently to four piston calipers up front. And I actually think the braking performance is pretty decent now. Yeah, so it used to have twin pot calipers and they were a little bit underpowered, I think. Didn't have too much bite, too much feel, but yeah, these new four pots are not too bad. Um, we'll quickly talk about the dash. It's an LCD dash not particularly fancy but you've got your rev counter you've got your speed it's got a fuel gauge you've got your time you've got a couple of trip meters the buttons are on the dash which is a bit of a pain uh, so you've got odometer trip a trip b average mpg as well which is actually quite useful and a fuel gauge so yeah all real world useful stuff switch gear is super basic but it's got the indicator exactly where you want it it's got hazard lights as well on the uh, left switch here, you've got the horn at the bottom. Uh, over here, you've got your kill switch and you've got the starter as well. It's got the Suzuki easy start system, so I'll show you what that does. So you just need to press the button once. It's a bit of a gimmick. There you go. It's also got the uh, low RPM assist, so as soon as you start to let out 
the clutch, it actually increases the revs, just actuates the throttle bodies. Again, kind of aimed at the new rider. But there you go, look, plenty of power. So we're at 70 miles an hour, we're just at 5,000 RPM. Barely any vibrations whatsoever. It's, yeah, it's super comfortable. Obviously it's a naked bike, you're gonna get wind blasts, but it's all clean air, as you would expect. This road is a little bit bumpy actually, so the suspension is, you can probably hear it in my voice, it is a little bit of a bumpy experience. The actual seating position is fairly uh, fairly comfortable. It's, it is quite a small bike in terms of dimensions. The bars are really narrow. So you do feel, even myself, I feel a little bit cramped up. So if you are a taller rider, you might, uh, you might struggle a little bit. It's actually quite a narrow tank as well. And that just helps uh, people get their feet on the floor if they are short of leg. Talking about the tank, it's got a 14 and a half litre fuel tank, which is pretty respectable. And because this bike is very good on fuel, I'm getting an average around about 66 MPG. Obviously, if you are riding it more spirited, you're gonna get less. Suzuki claims 74 MPG, but real world, I think you can expect anywhere between 60 to 65 MPG doing normal-ish sort of riding. Uh, the gearbox is lovely and slick. Six speed gearbox, a standard one down, five up. You know, whenever I ride these new motorcycles, so the Hornet, the GSX-8S, you've got the new TFT dashes, you've got all these electronics, and one of the beauties of the SV650 is just how simple it is. You've got a cable actuated throttle, a cable clutch. There are no real electronics. There's no traction control. There's no riding modes. Okay, it does have low RPM assist and an easy start system. In uh, UK and Europe, we go to ABS as standard, but that's it, there's nothing else. So it's a simple machine. And what I like about it is, especially the throttle feel, I feel like it's a really direct connection. That cable just actuates the throttle bodies. So what you twist at the grip is what you get from the engine. And I really like that. You know, there's no computer that has to kind of read what you're doing and depending on the angle of the wheels or the angle of your cock <laughs> Des decides what to deliver. Yeah, it's you and the road. And it it's, there's something to be said about simple bikes, to be honest. And the throttle response is absolutely lovely. It's so smooth. Now, I'm not saying that modern motorcycles with fancy electronics are a bad thing, but I'm just highlighting that sometimes simplicity, especially if it's, you know, if you're not having 200 horsepower and you don't need electronics to keep the bike throwing you into the nearest shrubbery, sometimes the simple solution is the best. Another thing I really like about the SV650 are the looks where a lot of modern motorcycles such as the Hornet and the GSX-8S, the Yamaha MT-07, they're all going for this kind of angular, sharp design language. The S50, the SV650 hails back to a simpler time. Round headlight, you know, standard, basic, naked bike looks. You know, you've got a headlight, you've got some wheels and an engine and a seat and a fuel tank. And that's kind of all you need, really. I think the bike is better for it. And you've got that lovely looking trellis frame, which is kind of a thing of the past now because they've manufacturers have found out they're not the uh, lightest, lightest frames and that making the engine a stressed member of the chassis is, is better for handling. However, I like it. I think it looks really, really good, especially with the color this uh, blue color that I've got on my bike, but you've got the gold as well, you've got red. Yeah, I think the looks are just very, very, a bit old school, but I like it. It's different. In a world of parallel twin, sharp looking, electronic laden motorcycles, the SV650, it's actually a breath of fresh air. And uh, yeah, I think uh, Suzuki are to be commended for keeping it around. And I think there's a reason why they're keeping it around. It's because it's popular. It's a good bike. It's got a really fun, characterful engine. It handles pretty well, considering the uh, old design. You've got to remember, this bike has been around since 1999 in various different guises. Uh, it has had a few different upgrades and changes. 
I will not be mentioning the Gladius because that thing is an abomination. So the SV650 isn't, you know, as wild as something like the Hornet or the GSX-8S to look at or to ride, but it is still a charming, charming little motorcycle. And I think people need to just stop obsessing over spec sheets and actually go out and ride these bikes. Because something a spec sheet can't tell you is how a bike will make you feel. So if you are considering a middleweight naked motorcycle, go out and test ride the SV650 because it is still a really good option. There's also the price. You know, the Hornet is very, very aggressively priced. I can't imagine it's going to stay at that price for very long. And the RRP for this bike is the same, £6,999, which is it's a bit steep considering. But if you look around, and I had a quick look, you can easily get one of these bikes for just over £6,000 brand new. We have City and Sweeps van up, up ahead. Like I said, don't pay full RRP. There are plenty of deals to be had via Suzuki dealers. I think at the moment they're offering £500 off if you test ride a bike. And I've seen them for as low as £6,100 brand new. And I think that, for this bike, that is a bloody bargain. And this bike will do it all. It will tour, it will commute. Might not off-road so well. It will go on back roads. You'll keep up with your mates in the twisties for sure. Basically, to answer the question that I posed at the beginning of the video, is that the SV650 is still an absolutely solid bike and it should not be overlooked. For reasons I've already said, but just to conclude, it's got a really characterful engine enough power and torque to have fun. The suspension and uh, brakes, while basic, still offer a fair, fairly decent performance and handling. Brakes are actually quite impressive. The ABS does kick in a little bit early, that's my only complaint. Um, you know, basic, Billy basic dash and electronics, but you don't need any more than that on this bike, I'll be honest. But uh, yeah, it's just a fantastic bike. I think it looks good as well. And as I said, in the world of parallel twins they seem to be taking over it's refreshing to still have a v-twin in the lineup another good thing about this bike is because it's been out for so long it's going to be super reliable that engine is bulletproof okay some of the other components might not survive winters all that well like you might get a bit of corrosion on some bolts and here and there there's also a whole host of options for aftermarket bits yeah it's just a really fun motorcycle and that hasn't changed. It's always been a fun motorcycle. It's always been reliable. It's a good bike for people who are new to riding because it's got a very linear delivery of power. Low seat height. It's not intimidating. Yeah, it's just... Actually, let's pull over. Let's just pull over here, just quickly. I do love that blue trellis frame. Yeah, so I think that will just about conclude this video of what I think about the uh, Suzuki SV650 in 2023. Still a decent option. Uh, briefly, we'll talk about tyres. Road Smart 3 from Dunlop, excellent tyres in the wet and dry as well. I will talk about some cons. The headlight is absolutely bloody awful. You will need to get a different bulb because the stock one is awful. But the sand is lovely. <laughs> yeah, so thank you very much for watching this video. If you do go out today, do ride safely. But remember to have fun, of course, otherwise what is the point? And until next time, you take care and peace. I'm out.